Hi everyone, this is Amanda from Amanda Owen Online Education. And if you guys joined us for our online lesson this week, the Grade 11 online lesson, we've been covering gas laws and we looked at the properties of, of different gases. So in this recap video, I'm going to recap the general gas equation for you guys. So grade 11s, remember that the general gas equation is given to you on your information sheet. And it looks, so you don't have to learn it. You just need to know how to use it. And I'm going to write it on the screen now. So it's P1 V1 over T1 equals to P2 V2 over T2. Right, and from this general gas equation, we get the three individual gas laws that you've had to learn. So I'm just quickly going to change color here. And we're going to break them down into the three different rules. So from this equation, if your temperature is constant, so if your temperature is constant, your temperature, which is at the bottom, will fall out of that equation. And you end up with P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2, right? And that is Boyle's law. I'm not going to obviously go into detail now with um, the proportions and the, the graphs and all of that. We did cover that in our online lesson, and if you would like to um, join us for one of our online lessons to find out more about that, then you're welcome to. I'll chat about that at the end of this, this video. So that is what happens if temperature is constant. If pressure is constant, so let's look at the next case. I'm just going to write press, or let's write pressure is constant. Then pressure... I'm going to underline in red, drops out of the equation, and we land up with V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And that you will know as Charles's law. And again, I'm not going to go into detail with Charles's law over there. Um, you're welcome to join one of our online lessons if you'd like to learn about that in a lot more detail. And then our last case is when the volume is constant. And when the volume is constant, the V will fall out of that general gas equation. We'll end up with P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. So this is our last um, of the three. So from our general gas equation, we can break it down into any one of these three. So that would be step one. And something else that I want to mention, when you're using the general gas equation, you need to read your question really well. So you must see a change. What do I mean by that? I mean that when you read your question, you'll see that you're not just looking at one state. You're actually changing. So you'll, you might have, they might give you pressure one that changes to pressure two. Or they might give you volume one that changes to volume two. So you are in a changing kind of state. Your conditions are busy changing. Then you use this general gas equation. Something else that's important with this general gas equation is the units that we work in. So P is the pressure. Now, if we want to work in kilopascal, that's fine. If we want to work in pascal, that's also fine. But you must use the same unit on the left and the right. Okay, So you can't use, for example, a kilopascal on the left and a pascal on the right. That won't work. Same units, left and right. Volume, you can use any volume unit as long as you keep it the same on the left and the right. So you could work with centimeter cube, you could work with decimeter cube, you could work with meter cube, as long as the same on the left and the right. When it comes to temperature, however, here we need to be quite careful. So for grade 11, this is where you need to watch out. Often they're going to give you your temperature in degrees Celsius. And we can't use degrees Celsius in this equation. We need to convert it into degrees Kelvin. So this equation will only work if our temperature is in degrees Kelvin. Right, so how do we work that out? Well, if we want the temperature in Kelvin... We basically take the temperature in degrees Celsius and you add 273. So please learn this, guys. Learn it as a rule. That would be your conversion. So if they give you degrees Celsius, do not substitute in. Change it to degrees Kelvin. Then you can use it in this equation. And remember, if you've got a constant, so which I just explained now, if your pressure, volume, or temperature is constant, that is going to fall out. So you're going to get one of those three um, different equations 
that I explained in the last uh, step. So you're either going to get P1V1 equals to P2V2, or you're going to land up with P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2, or you're going to land up with V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Okay, so you basically get all of those based on what is constant. Now our next gas equation, which is really important, is the ideal gas equation, which looks a little bit different to that last equation. Firstly, there's no change. So if there's no change, so they're not giving you pressure 1, which changes to pressure 2, or volume 1 changes to volume 2, or temperature 1 changes to temperature 2. There's no change involved. You're just looking at, um, at one state, in, you know, at one given moment in time. Then you're going to use this ideal gas equation, which is PV equals to NRT. Now, this is also given on your information sheet, grade 11s, so it is there. You just need to know how to use it. You don't have to learn it off by heart. You just need to know um, how to use it. Over here, our units are very important. So over here with the units, we now no longer can choose. Pressure needs to be in Pascal. It cannot be in kilopascal. Volume needs to be in meter cube. It can't be in centimeter cube or in decimeter cube. Your N is your number of mole. Okay, I'll, I'll recap that in a moment. R is your universal gas constant, 8,314. Uh, I don't have your um, exact information sheet in front of me at the moment. So remember, your constant will always be given and always use your uh, exactly as it is rounded on your information sheet. It could be actually rounded differently. As I say, um, I don't have the exact information sheet in front of me at the moment. And then uh, T is the temperature which must be in Kelvin. Okay, so let's quickly recap the conversions. So if you need to convert between Pascal and kilopascal, and you're starting with your Pascal, you divide by a 1,000. You'll get your kilopascal. If you want to go from kilopascal to Pascal, you will multiply by a 1,000. So that's the first important conversion to take note of. Our second important conversion to take note of is for volume between centimeter cube, decimeter cube, and meter cube. So if we're going um, on the screen from left to right over there, each time you will divide by 1,000. This is if you need to change your units, okay? If you go from meter cube to decimeter cube to centimeter cube, it's a multiply by 1,000. And then I want to quickly recap that number of mole equation, which you should all remember. And it is on your information sheet. Number of moles is equal to mass over molecular mass. Okay, remember that that N is measured in mole. The M is the mass measured in grams. And then we've got our molecular mass in gram per mole. Now, always remember, you can look this up on your periodic table. So you use your mass numbers on your periodic table. So it's actually a given. You just need to go and look it up. So I hope this recap video made sense for all of you. And if you are a part of our online school and you are joining us for our online lessons, grade 11s, we are going to continue with this next week. And next week I'd like to do more applied questions uh, with gases. And I would also like to do... Uh, graph questions. There's, there's many, many graph type questions that are related to gases. So we're going to do that in our online lessons. If you are not a part of our online school, so you don't um, receive online tuition from us, but you're following our videos, we will, re uh, we will be releasing our recap videos uh, each week. So you can either follow us on YouTube or you can follow us on Facebook as we will be posting all of our free recap videos on Facebook as well. And to find us on YouTube and Facebook, you can just search for Amanda Own Online Education. If you would like to find out more about online lessons, you are welcome to go to our website. And our website is amandaownonline.co.za. And there you can read up more about our online lessons. We offer grade 10, um, 11, and 12 online extra lessons for physical science. And it is based on the South African curriculum. So if you are interested or you have a couple of questions about that, pop over to our website. You're welcome to send us an email from there and we will reply to you from there. So I hope this made sense, guys.